this is what you get when you rush. Don't go away. Hey everybody, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm tired. I gotta tell you, I'm tired. It is Thursday night. This video is coming out tomorrow morning, all right? And uh, as of, I, I didn't finish the truck until yesterday. I finished the truck yesterday that I'm doing here. And I'm finishing the video today and trying to get it done. My own stupid fault, not a big deal. But when you're rushed and you're tired, uh, you know, I've been working on the couch here trying to get this video ready. And so um, I, I'm doing my intros and exits here. I'm, I'm doing makeshift work for you guys uh, to get this video out on time because I said it'll be here tomorrow. It's going to be here tomorrow. So I'm doing this project even on, as we speak on my couch. This is a Christmas build off with uh, uh, myself and a lot of other guys. Uh, I, I would love to mention them, but I'm so far behind. I don't have the list here with me. My dogs are flying about. Um, I'm going to put all of the other builders' names down in the list below. So please make sure you check out their videos uh, on this Christmas build-off. The, the concept is build a Christmas vehicle. And so that's what we're doing. Uh, so, hey, let's just get to it. All right, here we go. Well, I don't mind telling you, I've frazzled to the bone with this build. Um, I'm so far behind. Uh, my wife was out of town. I had the dog sit, and the dogs didn't want to let me work. So I'm finishing this at the very last minute. Uh, I'm going to start my Christmas build using this 32 Ford pickup truck. And what we're going to be trying to do today is we're going to be trying to make the truck that was owned by Hollis Wood in the movie 1941. Now, if you remember, Hollis Wood, uh, expertly played by Slim Pickens, owned a Christmas tree lot, and he had an old Ford pickup truck. I don't know if it was a 32 or not, um, so we're going to have that discrepancy. And also, I don't have spoked wheels for it, so I'm going to go with the best thing that I think will uh, look appropriate on it. But uh, I, I think in the end, it, it should come out all right. And uh, I got to tell you, in the movie 1941, uh, Slim sure did steal the show in that movie. Uh, he, he was just excellent in it. And so this is going to be a lot of fun for me. Um, but yeah, so let's get going. We'll get it apart. So while I pry this some bitch apart, let me try and uh, explain what happened. I, I ordered the decals at the beginning of the month and never saw them. So about a week before this video was due, I reached out to my decal guy and said, hey, I've never seen my decals. He says, well, I sent them on the second. So he sent me another pair right away, but we were down to just a couple days and I still didn't have the decals and I was panicking. So I began a full on search of, of my home and all my possessions. And sure enough, I found the original set on the floor in my car under some Christmas presents. So that's what put me so far behind, not only on this car, but the, the video that I'm uh, doing for Three Blind Mice for tomorrow. So I'm really, really behind. And that's why I'm just doing the voice over here on the couch right into the computer without using my good microphone and stuff. So forgive the audio if it sounds a little off. Anyhow, I got the car apart and... This is weird. The the fenders and interior are all one piece, and then they come off. And uh, I really didn't like that, especially because that bottom piece is plastic. Uh, that's going to make it more of a challenge for me to 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 do this whole thing. So um, hey, you know it is what it is. You work with what you got. So we got to get these doors off and this grill off, and then we can head to the stripper. Okay, so the doors are going to come off pretty easily. It's this grill that's going to be the bear. It's got like two little spring clips in it that hold it in. And boy, does it hold it in. Uh, so what you got to do is you got to kind of 
press down on one and get it to pivot out and hope you don't break the whole thing. But if you do break it, you should be able to glue it back on. As to the doors, they just kind of are held in uh, with their little hinge assembly. They just kind of pivot in and then the little uh, spring steel tension band uh, kind of holds it all together. But uh, So that's easy enough. We'll take the doors off. Uh, and get back to trying to figure out how to get that stupid grill off here in a minute. Well, after a big fight, I finally got the thing apart, and now we can dump it into the warm liquid goo uh, to get rid of this uh, baby poop yellow paint. In you go. Bloop. Uh, apparently, Clean Strip was a... Uh, killing people or something like that I don't know but they've pulled it all off the shelves and have reformulated it and stuff so I'm desperately trying to figure out what I'm going to use for stripper here going forward um, hopefully we can find something I like anyhow um, the truck has been in the the goo for a while so we can go ahead and pluck it out the paint should be uh, should be loose enough we'll tap it off clean it and then we'll uh Take it to the sink for a bath under some warm soapy water. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I, I really do love the convenience of the warm liquid goo bath. But uh, I sure do miss watching the stripper do its thing, you know, when, when you would brush it on. Anyhow, all right. We'll just uh, hit it with the brush here real quick. Just to see if everything's going to slurm off of it, which it is. Uh, the paint's nice and loose, so we'll get as much of it slurmed off, and then we'll head to the sink. And uh, by the way, just just so you all know, slurm is a uh, trade term uh, used by diecast restorers, so it's it's not just some frivolous word. It is actually a technical uh, word for this. Yeah, that's slurm. Don't know how to spell it. Okay, so here we are. We are back from the sink where we've washed this all off. Most of it came off. Uh, we'll hit it with a wire brush and stuff. Uh, in, in this casting, all we got to do is pretty much make sure it's, uh, you know, relatively clean because uh, a rough texture isn't going to impact us at all because this is going to be a beat-up old truck. And uh, so we, we don't really have to go crazy with body prep or anything like that. Now we are going to have to prime this thing uh, because of the uh, the fender part. It's all a soft plastic, and so it absolutely has to be primed. And so to keep the colors uh, consistent across uh, the board, we're going to have to prime the entire truck, uh, the body, the doors, uh, the base, the whole nine yards. Um, not a big deal. I'm going to use a uh, Tamiya Fine Primer when I get to that. Um, but, you know, for now, we're going to hit it up with the wire brush just to kind of knock off anything that's loose, but we don't really need to sweat any of it. Well, so, um, we're at the paint booth now, and, uh, here's my Tamiya Fine Primer. That stuff is a miracle. It really is. It does a great job. It doesn't kill any of your details. Uh, I just love it. And you'd, you'd be surprised, you know, it's such a little can that you kind of start thinking, well, what the heck, especially for the price. But you'd, you'd be surprised how far this goes. And it'll stick to your die cast really nicely. And more importantly, it will stick to the uh, plastic like we'll see here in the fenders. Um, or you can also get like a one of those big rattle cans of, of primer made specifically for plastic, if that's your thing. All right, after letting the primer dry, we are now painting the entire thing with a Tamiya Flat Brown. Um, that's going to give us that, that whole overall kind of dirty, rusty look. Um, and then we can build up from there. So everything gets Tamiya Flat Brown. Um, you know, I said I'm using the Tamiya Flat Brown, and that's going to lead me to make... A critical mistake and that's why I don't like to rush I'm, I'm not a guy who rushes through this stuff I usually take my time 
But I am rushing here, and it's going to come back to bite me. Now it's time for a product that I really love. It's these oil brushers by MIG. I love these things. They come in a lot of different colors. They're great for doing modulation, weathering, all sorts of stuff. Uh, my most used oil brushers are the rust ones. And uh, it's basically oil paints uh, made for modelers. So uh, this is a great way to apply uh, special effects uh, in a very convenient package. Really works great. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just applying little dabs of this in places where this truck would probably see a lot of rust. So why oil paints? Well, I'll tell you. Um, oil paints are really, really forgiving. They work fantastic over these acrylics, so I can put them down, manipulate them. I can, I can take them completely off if I want to. Um, I can feather them in. I can, uh, you know, do a lot of different things here. And uh, normally you have to take some of your own oil paint and thin it down with a little turpenoid. Um, I don't have to do that with these oil brushes. I just have to give them a good shake. They come with a really nice little brush inside of it, and I can just start dabbing it wherever I feel uh, the need. And uh, they work really fantastic. I highly, highly recommend them. Now that I've placed my little dots of uh, oil uh, colors all over the model, I'm going to break out some turpenoid in a nice, big, soft, soft brush. And I'm going to uh, dip my brush into the turpenoid, uh, dry away most of it, and then I can start to use this soft brush to feather these colors in. And uh, you have just complete control over the effect. Uh, just use it very, very lightly. You can just soften it up a little bit. Or heavy, you can make it almost imperceptible um, really great you can even do this the next day you know so it, it's really a wonderful thing but it just kind of really helps blend it in and and give it that little bit of touch of realism it's it's a fantastic thing uh, I love these things and they work great Okay, so the oil brushes are an oil paint, and so as anybody who's ever touched an oil paint knows, they take forever to dry. Um, normally that's not a concern of mine, but in this situation I was pressed for time, so I had to turn to the blow dryer. Uh, you know, just took out my wife's uh, blow dryer, turned it on a uh, high heat, and just started to heat this thing up until the oil paints dried up. Uh, so I could keep moving because I just didn't have any time to spare here. So the oil brushes are dry, and I'm over here at my uh, workbench again, and uh, I'm cutting out the decals. Yeah, I know you can't see anything there. It looks like a little piece of paper, but trust me, there are some decals there because Hollis Wood's truck had some very, very unique markings to it, and that's what's really going to make this sing. So... Uh, these were an important thing, and you can understand why I was panicking when I didn't get them. It's it's a funny thing. Um, he sent me out a second set when I called to see if, if where, where they were. So after I found the first set, I had to send back to him and say, hey, go ahead and bill me for that second set because, you know, it wasn't his fault. Um, so now I've got two sets of these decals. But, hey, you know... I'm actually giving this truck away uh, from the Christmas uh, extravaganza uh, live stream, and so maybe I'll maybe I'll make one for myself. You never know. So maybe these decals won't go to waste. So here's where I'm going to make my mistake that I mentioned earlier. The truck has a flat finish on it, and uh, you should never, ever, ever decal over a flat finish. What happens is that uh, the, the flat finish is based on the surface, and the surface is actually rough. And so when you put this decal over, if it doesn't settle down into all the roughness of that flat finish, you'll get what's called silvering. 
and you'll never ever be able to get rid of uh, the the look where you can see the decal. And so I'm doing exactly what you should never do when I'm putting decals on a flat finish. By the time I realize what I'm doing, uh, it's really too late for me to go back, especially with my time constraint. Um, so I do have a plan to try and fix it, but you should never, ever do this. Never put your decals down over a flat finish. Uh, I'm going to luck out here, and it's going to come out good, but man, don't do this. If you learn anything from this video today, do not do this. If you want a flat finish on your vehicle, paint it, put a gloss finish over it, in you know, like using a pledge floor care or something, then put your decals down, then put a flat finish over the entire thing, and that should make your de decals just about disappear. But anyhow, I digress. We are taking the decals and just putting them on where they belong. Um, they're clear decals, but they're, you know, on a clear backing. So always trim as close to the printing as you can. Um, give the decals as little an opportunity uh, to stand out as possible. All right. Uh, while I was doing the decals, I realized I had made another mistake in my hurry. I forgot to prep the posts, so uh, it's not such a big deal on this truck because it's an old beater, so if it gets a, a smudge or a scuff or something like that, I don't need to really worry about it. But, man, I hate when I do this. Uh, so here I am, I'm using my Vix bits to clean up the posts because they're a mess. So what this is doing is it's uh, evening the post out and putting a, uh, a little dimple dead square in the center of the post that I'll be able to drill into. So we'll get that ready and then we'll drill out the post. Okay, so I prepped the post and then I used a small drill bit to drill them out and now we're going to tap them. I'm going to put a little dab of oil in each one and I'm going to use my nifty little uh, tap handle I got from uh, Bright Vision uh, to tap these out and get them ready for uh, putting the car back together. Um, man, this handle is the best thing ever. It's really super affordable. So if you are a tapper, I highly recommend the tap handle. Now, I've done them both ways. Um, I'm, I'm fine with not tapping, but I, I've become a fan of this. It makes everything work so much better. Uh, I really have become a fan of this uh, all because of this tap handle. So if, if you're uh, reticent to, to tap out your post, uh, I suggest you get this little handle and give it a try. I think you'll like it. Now you'll notice that I go in and then I back out a little bit and then I go in and then I back out a little bit. That's just to clear some of the metal shavings uh, out of the tap. Um, because the last thing on earth you want to do here is break the tap off in the post. That will really cause you a bunch of problems. So, you know, I go in a little bit. If I still feel it to start to uh, um, being a little tougher to turn, I will back it out a couple uh, twists, and then I'll, I'll start going back in again um, until I get the hole uh, tapped out all the way. And then I can take the tap, put it away, and we're ready for a screw. So I told you I had a way to try and fix the decals, and what I did is I sprayed the entire thing uh, with uh, uh, floor care, pledge floor care, and that put a gloss sheen over not just the decals but the entire car and kind of blended them in a little bit. Um, it's not perfect, but it, it came out really, really good. So I was really happy with that. So we just let that dry, and then we can uh, go back over to the paint booth. And now what I'm using is a little Iraqi sand in Vallejo paint. Really, really thin. And I'm spraying down uh, the entire bottom of the vehicle. And the fenders. And, uh, you know, just different places to give the truck uh, a dusty, rusty look. Uh, now what I've done is I've taken it back apart and I put the window in and put the wheels in. And I'm back at the paint booth, 
so that I can spray some of that dust onto the wheels and even a little bit on the windshield. And so right now I'm just spraying the sides of the wheels and the hubcaps, you know, the whole thing. And then don't forget the treads. So you got to turn it upside down, spread the wheel, turn it, spread the wheel, or spray the wheels, turn it, so on and so forth. Blech, that's really hard to say. But you get the idea. Every, everything is getting a touch of Iraqi sand paint. All right, after the Iraqi sand, I can put in a few details, and we can call this project done, and just in the nick of time. All right, there you have it. Hollis Woods truck that he uses on his Christmas tree lot where he grows Christmas trees for everybody to use and celebrate with. Uh, it was a lot of fun and it uh, helped me remember this fantastic movie and, and the wonderful role Slim Pickens played in it. Um, I, gotta, I gotta go because I got another video Saturday it's not done. So, <laughs> man, I am sucking up the joint. I got to tell you. All right, I'm going to get out of here. This is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe. Click the little bell. And you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. All right, I'm getting out of here. Until next time, be good.